Ever since I came out the womb, I knew I was destined for greatness. I wasn't meant to stay in New Orleans. There's nothing for me there. Nothing except the memories from a bad breakup and a mother who wishes she'd never had me. I was meant to leave all that behind and move to the big city, New York. So, like a dove, I spread my wings and flew. I've made a lot of mistakes over the years, and it doesn't make it any easier when you're a celebrity and constantly in the public eye. The bar fights, the snowy nights, the altercations with my stands and stalkers. But becoming a model was not one of them. I'm making it to the top, from online ads to department stores to runways. And you best believe I will do anything I can to keep it that way whether or not I get a good or bad reputation from it. But not without my best friend. I'm often convinced that Yu Yen and I were made for each other. The Simfluencer and the model, taking New York by the throat. We became best friends on accident when we were kids. She had just moved from Tomerang and wasn't being treated too nicely by our peers, bullied for being the only Asian kid in our entire school. I didn't like that. It reminded me how I was bullied for my vitiligo. So, I stood on business. It's safe to say, after that, they never bothered us again. And the rest was history. Where she goes, I go. And where I go, she goes. And that included 1,300 miles away from home. She was over New Orleans anyways. The lack of diversity, the weather, the dating scene. As a hopeless romantic, why not look for love in the big city? And gain two million Simstagram followers in the process. Yu Yen introduced me to Donala. If I'm being honest, I don't really like Donna. I think she's a stuck up old money bitch that doesn't care about anyone but herself or the next guy's bones she's gonna jump. But I do care about her wealth and connections. Born and raised in a Chestnut Ridge estate, she grew up extremely privileged. And she'll tell you all about it too. Her parents, Whitaker and Margot Hayes, made their money from the nectary Whitaker inherited from his mother, who inherited it from her father and so on and so on. She has it all. A Chestnut Ridge Nectary, a vacation home in Solani, three horses, a fantastic nose job, a trust fund, everything, every goddamn thing. And she didn't even appreciate it. Rehab, arrested countless times, boarding school, Whoa. Oh. but she's cleaned up, or at least mostly. And now lives off her parents' money here in New York. She's never worked a day in her life, with the exception of her paintings, which I will admit are awfully good. And even though Donna is a spoiled, rotten brat who I believe is the epitome of everything terrible in the world, she was a whole lot of fun. Like I said, she's mostly clean, 
She loves men, sometimes more than one at a time. She loves to go to the club. And somehow, she knows everyone there is to know. I stay friendly with Donna because I can benefit from her. We can focus on the fun, on the partying, <laughs> not the drama, not being in love. Oh. <laughs> Insula. <laughs> Delish. <laughs> oh, I'm Gina. Yabakoi, Teru, Batanabi, Finosa, Golarga, Stoom Satura, Clonkboy, Coapi, Jessene, Clonkis, Hippene, Fran, Oktain, Barbani, and Jasmine, Ron, Gorge, Fariki, Barovi, Sina. Fuck love. It's overrated. Useless. Luckily for me, I met someone who feels the same exact way. Jaden is a jazz singer that Yu Yen and I met through Donna. She is the best goddamn singer I've heard in my life. And to think, she's not even a B-lister. She didn't have much growing up. She's the oldest of six kids, and her parents didn't make enough money to support the entire family. So she sang at small gigs in her hometown, and that's when she met Morgan Ambrose, a guitarist in their first year of college. Jaden fell hard for them, hesitant to initiate anything because of their age difference. So when Morgan finally kissed her, she became the happiest girl alive. But their relationship got dark very fast. Morgan liked to party. And even when Morgan got worse, Jaden stuck beside them. She's the ride or die type. I hope to never love like that. She ignored all the drugs the occasional violence and her gut feelings about cheating. All for Morgan. Things were good at first when they moved to New York. Jaden had signed with a label and saw her potential, excited to get to work on her debut album and finally make some real money. And her and Morgan had a really fun time exploring the city and seeing what it had to offer. But it wasn't long until Morgan went back to their old bad habits. Morgan couldn't call Jaden crazy now. She had the proof to back it up. She loved Morgan, but she loved her career more. And the sense that she didn't have as a teenager had finally kicked in. She had to let Morgan go. Morgan begged, pleaded, but Jaden said no. And Morgan didn't like that. She hid in her bathroom until Morgan left. She didn't hear from them for quite some time. Until one day. She received a call from the county jail. Morgan was booked for possession, hoping Jaden would help them out. She hung up the phone and never heard from Morgan again. Though she kept up on them. They were arrested a few more times before falling off the radar completely. Jaden couldn't help but worry. She stayed up sometimes wondering if they were alive or dead. And even though she knew she shouldn't, she missed Morgan deeply and would do anything to have them back. But she can't. So she keeps their memory alive in her music. But being in the spotlight comes with its own problems. Problems created by cowards that can hide behind a screen. There is someone targeting me and my friends, sending tips into gossip social media pages that contain all the intimate details of our lives. And the worst thing about it is that we don't have a clue who is doing it. You can't trust anyone in this world. Everyone is jealous of you. Everyone is out to get you. Everyone wants what you have. Or some hate you so much that they do anything to see it taken from you. And recently, 
Instead of this anonymous trash sending these tips to gossip accounts, they decided to create their very own blog dedicated to me, my friends and other models, sim celebrities, and sim influencers in New York. It's called Scandal Sim. And right now, I'm their best advertisement. I guess we'll just have to wait and see who slips up. Until then, I'm going to continue making this city my bitch. The gentle April rain that stained the window panes last night is all but gone but lingers on in scented clouds of air we watch the town awaken to the trembling morning light you're so near and spring is everywhere we danced until the stars came out and spread across the sky.